coffee. Coffee now! <laughs> Right now, you're going to hear a story that should alarm every American, whether you're Democrat, Republican, AC, DC, or foot power. The feds confiscated an investigative reporter's confidential files during a raid. On the face of it, you say, well, what does that mean? I'm not a reporter. Why should I care? Well, let's listen to the story from the reporter whose house was invaded by body-armored federal thugs, federales, this is a woman who's a very nice person, Audrey Hudson. She's been working for years as a reporter for the Washington Times. Now I believe she's with Newsmax. Yes? Is it Newsmax? Yeah. Audrey, are you with us on the Savage Nation? I am. Thank you so much for having me on. Audrey, when I saw the story, I said, that's awful. When I saw it was you, I said, this is even more awful. Would you tell my audience what happened? Yeah, in early August at about 4.30 in the morning, my sweet little schnauzer just started barking like crazy. I got out of bed, looked out the window, and our house was literally surrounded. And there were uh, officers wearing complete body armor approaching the house. And my, my husband gets up early in the morning to go to work. He leaves about 4.15. So they had actually caught him down the road and brought him back. The phone rings. It's my husband. He said... The police are here. Open the door. Now, what was the crime? They they came in with a search warrant for a potato launcher. What is a potato launcher? A potato launcher. My husband purchased it five years ago online. It's it's a gimmick. It's just a fun little thing. You kind of you. Um, it's just like a, a a big barrel, if you will, that you would attach to your gun, and you you kind of jam it onto a potato. It takes a slice of the potato. You, you you punch it out with a you know with a blank, and it's it's fun. We also have a golf ball launcher. What is it? Does it fire the potato? It fires potatoes. So in other words, they're trying to now seize all assault potato launchers. They alleged in the uh, Obama now wants all assault potato launchers seized in America. <laughs> yes. No, Audrey, this is not a laughing matter. Is that why they came? It's not. The, the search warrant said they came because. They believe that he had purchased this potato launcher from some Swedish arms smuggler or something. Wait a minute. Where do you buy a potato launcher? He bought it online. Okay, but let's say I wanted a potato launcher. Where would I buy a potato launcher? A potato launcher, I don't recommend it. But all you do is put in Google, and you'll see it'll pop up. But are they illegal? Is it illegal to buy a potato launcher? They are not illegal. So they why is the government afraid of assault potato launchers? Uh, I don't think they were. I think that was just the excuse to get into my house. Ah, okay. So now what were they really after? Well, once they were in the house, the Homeland Security official said, are you the same Audrey Hudson who wrote all of those air marshal stories for the Washington Times? Oh, God. What air marshal stories? Uh, you know, I, I talked about them on your show, but it's been years ago. Um, about the, um, the Homeland Security officials lying to Congress about how many air marshals were actually protecting flights from another terrorist attack. Okay, you wrote that. It was critical of uh, TSA, I suppose, or Homeland, DHS, rather, and Big Sis got angry. And she, it, was she the one, you think, behind this? Big Sis, she's not there anymore. Well, that's true. She's not, she's not there anymore. But this happened on August 6th, the, the raid did. And, and was Big so, Sis still there? Or is, had she left to destroy the University of California yet? You know, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you this. Since I live in California and I'm a graduate of the University of California, I'm going to put out a warning in the uh, alumni bulletin warning everybody to definitely turn in their assault potato launchers. <laughs> it would be wise. I know you're making me laugh, and I need you to make me laugh, because quite honestly, this whole thing has just... All right, so they, see, they went in on the pretext of the potato launcher. Then they asked you about, did you write the articles critical of DHS? And then what happened, Audrey? So then they searched our house for three hours. They confiscated my legally registered guns. Oh, my God. Until a month after the raid that they called me to tell me that while they were here, they also helped themselves to five files. They oh, no. All of the source material. Did the search warrant contain an element in it which said they can get those files or not? No, it, it had. No, it did not. Then, okay, here's the. Okay, I want to hear the rest of it because, I, are you suing them? Well, I'm thinking about it. 
I'm thinking about well, it. Well, who authorized this? Who was it who, 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 who violated your privacy? Who violated your civil rights? Who violated your American rights? Who did this? The Maryland State Police and Homeland Security. Well, I'm not a lawyer, but I know a good one, and I'd raise a, a defense fund for you in one minute. I'd do anything I can to see the guilty party suffer for this. I would take you up on that. I will do it. I will do it. We have to stop this thuggery coming out of DHS and other federal departments. We have to stop it from wherever it's coming, because it's going to kill all of us unless we stop this fascism, Audrey. You know this better than I. You know how this begins, and you know how this ends. I do, and that's what's really so frightening. I mean, what what next? Are the state police going to start letting the Navy and the Marines accompany them on search warrants? into a reporter's house to confiscate their notes. They didn't touch any other file in my office. And I have they pulled out boxes and boxes and boxes of my files and went through every one. They took none, none of my documents on the guns I owned. They took the five m files on the Federal Air Marshal Service. Okay, so they wanted to find your sources inside the Air Marshal Service. Is that what they were looking for? That's what they walked out with. So they were looking to, to, to find the federal employee who blew the whistle on what was going on and punish that individual. Is that what they wanted? Yes. Have they found that person or persons, in, in your estimation? I, I do not know because, quite frankly, I have not reached out to any of those guys. I, I've cut them off. I, I, I can't put them in danger. Okay. I can't. Did you get your guns back? No. What do you mean, no? Why not? No. They haven't filed any charges, and they haven't returned my gun. Okay, you need a lawyer. You need a lawyer, Audrey. I'm sorry. I have enough trouble on my own, but I have to help you. I have to help you. The Savage Nation will help you. We've got to raise money for the Audrey Hudson Defense Fund. This is a seminal case. Every reporter in America should be behind you, and I'm sure they're not. Have you had any help from ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, Fox News, etc.? I will be on Fox on Monday. Oh, good. Uh, on Wallbanger's show or on, on uh, Ma Megan's show? I'm doing, actually, I'm doing Gretchen's new show. Good, good for her. Good for her. At least she has the, 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 the integrity to do a story that, that is not self-serving. How much can we watch Wallbanger with the phone operator? How many more days of that? <laughs> but, Audrey, this is a big story. And, and Gretchen, yes, I, no, I admire Gretchen for doing that. I really do. At least she's going to back you. That's fantastic. Now, first of all, they entered with a search warrant on the pretext of the potato launcher, number one. Is a potato launcher illegal? No, it is not. So why would they, how would they get a search warrant for potato launcher? They actually didn't even get it in my county. They had to go judge shopping to get the warrant signed. But on what basis, if the potato thing is not illegal? Because on, they claimed in the search warrant that a potato launcher can be converted into a silencer, which, by the way, is also not illegal. But if we had a silencer, we would have owed taxes on it. A silencer of that size would have to fit on the end of a what kind of gun? It would be a huge barrel, a monster bore, right? It could have fit on, yeah, yeah. You'd have to put that on the end of a bazooka. Well, no, they're not, they're not that big. It's oh, big. so it's small potatoes we're talking about. Yeah, it, yeah, you don't, it doesn't launch the... All right, so they're only seizing small potato assault launchers. Yes. Okay. I, I feel better because I thought that the government was going after large potato launchers. Well, at least we see that Obama's minions are, are consistent. They're uh, concentrating on small potatoes. You know, that's a great way of putting it, because that's exactly what they did. Look, Audrey, I, I, I can turn anything into a joke, because I have a gallow sense of humor, but this is not a laughing matter. Anyone listening to the show should understand the seriousness of this subject. It's a Friday night. They don't want to hear any more. They sent in the Coast Guard Investigative Service. What in the hell is that? That, well, exactly. My husband works for uh, the Coast Guard Yard in Baltimore. But this has nothing to do with his job. He's a civilian. They claim, they're now claiming in, um, in the uh, story, the Daily Caller broke the story this morning, and the Washington Times also has a story up now, that they, they claim that they, they were brought along because my husband worked there. This was not work-related. A Coast Guard investigative service breaking into a reporter's house? Yes. 
And the Coast Guard's not concerned about the illegal aliens here, not concerned about the uh, visitors from Iran, the visitors from Saudi Arabia who might be plotting something against us. You're their problem? Yes, I am their problem. Inland. Oh, Audrey, Audrey, Audrey. I just want to make that clear. What what'd you say, Audrey? I didn't catch that. I said I don't live on a houseboat. I want to make that clear. Okay, well, that's interesting because if you did, of course, you'd be, you'd be under their jurisdiction. I, I hope they didn't hurt your schnauzer at the same time they broke it. Normally they kill dogs now. Dad, don't you know that's? I know you mean that seriously. Oh, I, I do. Care. How many how many dogs have we seen killed by these psychotic drug addicted cops that break into people's houses and are afraid of a schnauzer? To be honest, that was the first concern that. We Absolutely. Was, and I, I put the dog in the bedroom. I didn't even go to the front. Well, because after all, a guy with a forty caliber gun and body armor might be hurt by a schnauzer. Miniature schnauzer. Well, that's right. After if they're after small potato launchers, they can be after small dogs. <laughs> they put, and then they moved her out of the bedroom and they put her in the bathroom. Did they bring her in for questioning and put her under a lamp and give her a beating? No. Did they bring in a uh, Rottweiler to give her a, 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 a grilling? We're, but we're talking about we're speaking with Audrey Hudson, one of the best investigative reporters in American history, who was just attacked, verbally abused, terrified by your government for no reason whatsoever. If you can't ask Audrey a question, we'll open it up when I come back at eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. We have one open line, eight five five four hundred savage, eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. If you have a question or a comment for Audrey Hudson, then we'll go back to regular programming. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. It is the Savage Nation's getting weirder every day under Obama. I hate to say under Obama, but do you think this is a coming from the top? When you have the federal government confiscating an investigative reporter's confidential files during a raid that was set up as a pretext to get her files, you're now living in a banana republic. And she should sue them and find out who launched this jackbooted attack upon her. Audrey Hudson is a wonderful veteran Washington, D.C. reporter, a real journalist, as opposed to the fakes like George Step on All of Us. She's not one of those fakers at those networks. She's a real reporter, which is why they did this to her. Let's take our first question. Line 7, Angela on WABC. Go ahead, please. Hello? Yes, Angela. Go ahead, please. Angela, what's your question for Audrey? We'll go on to the next caller. 855-400-7282. Audrey, are you there? I am. I think it's best if you just tell us one more element to this story. Did you ask when you will get your weapons back? Because they had nothing to do with the raid. They told me I was not, that I couldn't have the weapons. What? They told me that because um, my, my husband was a uh, registered firearm dealer about 20 years ago. And he got busted for not paying a tax on a gun. Yeah. And so... and. So now they're saying that because of a Maryland law and because of what happened 27 years ago, they said that I'm not allowed to have a gun. Audrey, I want to read some of the comments on the bottom of the Daily Caller article and bless them for covering it. They're the only ones who did, by the way. It was on the Daily Caller. Drudge picked it up. I put it on Michael Savage. Listen to what someone wrote. The similarities between Barack Hussein Obama's America and Vladimir Lenin's Russia are eerie. Not only is Obama mirroring Lenin's tactics to the letter for socialization of her economy, he's using KGB terror tactics to intimidate freeborn U.S. citizens and unconstitutionally denying them their civil rights. The daily criminal activities of this corrupt Marxist dictator Obama is a crime against every single citizen of this country. Do you agree with that or is that too harsh? Um, I would not disagree. You would not disagree. Would, it, it, do you think that's why you were targeted, because you're one of the few investigative reporters left? I definitely think they wanted to intimidate me and silence me. I definitely believe that. Do you remember what was said by Cardinal Niemöller? When the Nazis came for the communists, I remained silent because I was not a communist. 
When the Nazis locked up the Social Democrats, I remained silent because I was not a Social Democrat. When the Nazis came for the trade unionists, I did not speak out for I was not a trade unionist. When the Nazis came for the Jews, I did not speak out for I was not a Jew. And when they came for me, there was no one left to speak out. That was Cardinal Niemöller in Nazi Germany, Audrey, and frankly, all the hairs on my body just stood up. I think everyone listening to this show should tell all of their friends about what happened to Audrey Hudson. Because something has got to change in this country rapidly for us to survive, even as a rudimentary constitutional republic. If you follow the arc of this uh, scenario that Obama is inflicting upon reporters and everyone else, there will be no free speech, there will be no free reportage, there will be no free anything left in the country except food stamps. Audrey, do you have any last words for the audience tonight? Well, ironically, this is free speech week. It's Free Speech Week. It's National Free Speech Week. Audrey, are any other major mainstream media folks, do you have any friends? Are they, are they concerned that they could be next? Uh, you know, actually, I heard today from a lot uh, of my colleagues um, uh, that, I, that I've worked with over the years in Washington. But are they going to help you? It's okay for them to say, Audrey, we sympathize, but they don't have the guts to help you? Well, there, there's some more articles that are going to come out. I'm, I'm confident. Well, I'm frightened for you, Audrey. I know you, you told my producers that you haven't laughed since this happened. When did this happen to you? This happened on August 6th. And you've been, you've been basically living in a, in, a, in a bubble of fear since. That's exactly right. I didn't, they, I didn't know that they took my files until September. Well, this is very serious business. You're listening to The Savage Nation. If you don't know what the story is about, because you haven't heard it before in the other shows, go to a Daily Caller or... MichaelSavage.com, and Audrey Hudson will do everything we can to keep the story alive. We will be in, t in touch. Give your husband a hug. Give your dog a kiss. Well. Or shall I say give your dog a hug and give your husband a kiss? I don't know what is better. But the thing is this. Maybe when this is all over, you can ask the Obamas if they will let Bo, their, their dog, have a play day with your dog in compensation for what they've done to your dog, who they've traumatized. She's been through enough. That's right. I think Bo deserves, I think your dog deserves a day with Bo. Do you want to hear something really sad? You're the only person that will get this. Is ever since this happened, my dog is so traumatized, she will not sleep in the bed with us anymore. She gets up as soon as she thinks we're asleep, and she goes back to the front window and, and sits in front of Oh, my God. She's waiting to, ha she's like a watchdog now. She is. So she's up oh. night, patrolling the house and, and just crashing all day. Well, I guess the the brave police from Maryland should uh, bring a shotgun next time because, you know, if they kick your door in, that schnauzer just might be a threat to their body armor. Oh, that, you know, that, that, that terrified me. That's why I said that the first thing I did was I grabbed the dog and put her a up. A raid based on a false pretext. And I looked at the uh, reporter's name and I said, Audrey? Nice Audrey Hudson? A nice middle-aged lady, as nice as they come, and they go with body armor? And they intimidate her and her husband and her dog? just to get files to find out who inside Homeland Security gave us their information. This is a story that should be in every reporter's blog tonight. But there's a story that's somewhat even more disturbing. We've all asked ourselves, since the Obamacare debacle, who got the contract to build that, that lemon? that lemon, uh, uh, the Obamacare website. Who created that lemon? First thing that entered my mind, sue them. Look into it. Came out today. Michelle Obama's Princeton classmate got a no-bid contract, her company did, rather. No-bid contract for the company that built the Obamacare website. $700 million enrollment website, no-bid contract. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Does it bother you? Does it bother you at all? George Schindler, the president for U.S. and Canada of the Canadian-based CGI group, became an Obama 2012 campaign donor after his company gained the Obamacare website contract. Does that make sense to you? Is that how it works? Ah, come on. They all do it, huh? They all do it? Are you serious? No, they all don't do it. People go to prison for this kind of thing. No, they don't all do this. 
As reported by the Washington Examiner early October, DHHS Health and Human Services reviewed only CGI's bid for the Obamacare account. CGI was one of 16 companies qualified under the Bush administration to provide certain tax services to the federal government. A senior VP for the company testified this week before the House Committee on Energy and Commerce that four companies submitted bids. Four companies submitted bids, but only one was considered CGI's. Why? It's been a disaster. It's been a disaster. Let's put aside the connection to Michelle Obama. Let us say it's a weak link. Let's just say, come on, it's a big deal. She went to Princeton. She was a classmate uh, of Michelle. That doesn't mean anything. Let's put that aside. The fact that the website doesn't work is the story. You go to prison for that. You pay your money back. And you go to jail if you steal money like that. If you go into a 7-Eleven and you rob a beer, you will go to prison. But if you go into the sol solar industry and you rob $500 million, you go directly to the White House dinner. This is sickening. I guess you don't care about it. No bid contracts. How do you feel about the reporter? How do you feel about the no bid contract? Let's begin in, well, Florida somewhere, WCOA, Florida. Rebecca, welcome to the Savage Nation. You're on with me. What's on your mind? Uh, good evening. I enjoy your show immensely. Um, I was, the first thing I thought of when I turned on the radio and you were uh, told us about Miss Audrey, the first thing that came to my mind was Michael Hastings. And I was like, oh, God forbid, she should check her car on her vehicle and make sure they didn't put something in there that'll blow up. Well, I don't think most listeners know who Michael Hastings was. I do. Will you please tell the listeners who he was and what happened to him? T tell the audience who Michael Hastings was, please. Um, he was a journalist in California, and apparently they did a speed chase after him. And of what I read, uh, his car blew up. And he was in a, a he was in a late model Mercedes, and he was known to be a very timid driver. And yet the car was seen speeding it up to 100 miles an hour, and then crashed into a tree. Blew up, caught fire, and he was burned to death. There were then uh, rumors and stories and uh, suspicions that uh, this was done by a, some, some kind of controlling uh, device that can control a chip in a car, which is, by the way, valid. You can control a car uh, today with uh, electronic devices. It can be controlled from a distance. What was funny was that the engine was behind the car instead of ahead of it. Well, how'd that happen? I don't know. Engine was behind the car. Well, we'll never know what really happened. Uh, after reading that story, I bought a 1970 Jaguar, not because I like old cars that don't run well, but because there are no chips in it. it, it it's got four speeds, three old SU carburetors. There's not one computer chip in the entire car. Oh, lucky you. Unfortunately, I had sold my 65 Cadillac before that, I'd pay more for it than I than I than I got for it when I when I when I auctioned it off, <clears throat> because that car was a bear of a car. That car could outrun a lot of cars on the road. It was a tank. And there was not a computer chip in that '65 Caddy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks for the call. Maybe they put a computer chip in Teddy. I better check him when he gets home tonight from the groomer. I better find out if they put a computer chip in my dog. He's been acting strange lately. I must tell you. Every time I give him a greenie, he looks at me in a weird way, like as if to say. Is that all, Dad? Is that all you're giving me as a greenie? What's wrong with you? Anyway, you can only laugh at these things uh, up to a certain point. There are other stories that are equally disturbing, so let me disturb you a little more. It's a Friday night. Most normal people are not listening to the radio. Most normal people are out partying. Uh, they're on drugs. They're drunk. They're stuffing themselves with heart attack food. So if you're not that type of individual and you're concerned about America and the direction it's taken under this administration, here's a few stories for you that may uh, make your night even more disgusting. Soldiers at Fort Hood were told that Christians are extremists and a threat to America. I'm not making it up. Soldiers from Fort Hood said they were told that evangelical Christians and Tea Party members are extremists and a threat to America. They said they were warned not to donate to those groups because they would be subject to punishment under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. This came at a briefing on October 17th. 
and a half an hour of it was devoted to discussion about how perceived radical groups like Christian-based American Family Association were tearing the country apart. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Fox News reports another soldier attending the meeting confirmed the threat of punishment was made. The threat of punishment was made. They are now punishing Christians, especially evangelical Christians. There are other stories that should make you sick. Atheist Mickey Weinstein, who in my opinion is a public enemy, and his mirths struck again. This man is a deviant of the lowest order, Mickey Weinstein, in my opinion. He's an atheist who has gone after every religious symbol in the U.S. military single-handedly. He has the military in his hand. The well-known atheist Mickey Weinstein is now being used by Obama to advise all the branches of the military on religious tolerance. And one of Mickey Weinstein's policies includes court-martialing military chaplains who share the Christian gospel during spiritual counseling of American troops. I can't make this up. This is how perverted this is. The Air Force Academy today announced that it will now be optional for cadets to recite, so help me God, at the end of its honor oath. This is because of the atheists like Mickey Weinstein, who apparently hates God and wants everyone to issue God from their lives. I don't care if you're an atheist or an agnostic. That's fine with me. That's your right. But I really resent these people stepping on the hearts and souls of people who believe in God, especially those who believe in Jesus Christ. I've got to say this to you. I have never in my life seen anything like this. Why is this so offensive? It's so offensive because George Washington took the oath as our first president, and he swore the oath to God. He said, so help me God. So why does the American military now turn to a twisted sister, in my opinion, like Mickey Weinstein, whoever this piece of garbage is, and ask this piece of garbage, Mickey Weinstein, whether or not they can say God in a military chapel? This is the country under Obama. This would stop if we had a real president. If we had a real president who really feared, was a real God-fearing president, as opposed to a faker, this one doesn't even fake it. Whatever you may say about Bill Clinton, at least he carried a stage Bible. He had an oversized Bible built for him by his friends in Hollywood. A stage Bible so you wouldn't miss the cross. But at least he staged it. This one doesn't even go to church. Do you know that he's the first president in American history who doesn't even put on a pretense of going to church? How do you feel about that? If he's an atheist, well, then now you know why Mickey Weinstein, atheist, is being called upon to deball Christianity in the military. Don't call me on this. There's nothing you can say. That's all. Nothing you can say. Atlanta, Georgia. Troy, you're up on the Savage Nation. Fire away. Yes, Mr. Savage. I, I just want to say that uh, this is this is very serious and it's very scary. Uh, I've listened to your program off and on through the years, and I'm, I'm going to say that most of the time, a lot of times I don't agree with you, but there are times when I do. And this is definitely one time that I agree 110% with you. Now, what you're talking about, the, the, uh, the home invasion by federal SWAT teams into the reporter's home, right? Yes, sir. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Well, every liberal should be concerned about that because they're next. Sir, I just want to say that, you know, to anyone on your program that's listening, regardless what political party you are, we really need to pay attention to this and put all that aside and, and get together and unite. This is, this is very scary and it's very serious. Troy, listen, you're a liberal. According to the board, it says you're a liberal who voted for Obama. Do you think this is coming from the top? Say again, sir? Do you think this type of behavior on the part of uh, DHS breaking into Audrey's home on a pretext and stealing her files, do you think this is coming from the top? Sir, you know, I don't know where it's coming from. I, 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 I'm going to say that I'm going to have to assume it is. I don't know where else it could come from. I mean, I'm not familiar with the functionality. You're right. You're an intelligent man, and you're not jumping to conclusions, but it doesn't matter where it came from. It was wrong. Matter. It doesn't matter. It's a violation of her civil rights. It's about, and you know what? I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm just floored. I, I, 
I don't know what else to say. I, I'm, I'm just, this is some very scary stuff, and it's very serious. And, I, and again, I just want to urge anyone, you know, regardless of your political affiliation, need to, you know, get involved and pay attention to this story, and we need to rally behind this woman. Because like you said in, in your, in your uh, monologue, part of your monologue, I mean, who's going to be there when they come for us? And, and, and That's right. That's how it goes, one after the other. And it, it doesn't have to be intentional. What happens with a snowballing effect is that when a government gets out of control, which which this one seems to be sort of out of control in its desire to, uh, let us say, suppress free speech, suppress investigation, suppress criticism, is that it does snowball and it has no end to it. Everyone gets crushed in that avalanche. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to tell you this, and I thank you for being uh, a listener, even though you don't agree with me politically on many issues. We're going to try to have Audrey on once a week to give us an update, give her some outlet. I thank God she's going to be on uh, on Fox News next week with Gre- Greta, Gretcher, 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 Gretcher Van Soostern. She'll be on Gretcher Van Soostern's show. So, okay, what can you do? Hey, thank God Gretcher will have her on. We'll have her on. You'll have Coffee. her on. And I'll be on in a few minutes. Coffee.